Good evening, everybody, and welcome on a very hot evening uh, to an air-conditioned room, so that's, that's all good. Uh, for the um, thank you very much for coming on tonight. Good to see so many of you here. I uh, appreciate the effort you all always make to uh, come to these occasions. This tonight's special, um, I'm being honest, this is uh, a highlight of our sort of lecture series for the year, and we're delighted to have Wayne here tonight to talk to us. Um, a few really annoying club bits first, which I'll whistle through, because I'm going to much more important than I am. Um, we don't plan to be on fire tonight at any point, so, but you know where the fire escapes are. If the fire happens, run, scream, but don't trip over each other, make it sure it's all at the same time. Um, the club, you know who we are, so I'll go through the quick bit. Uh, firstly, thanks to Chapman Ferrant for sponsoring this evening, who adorned us with their magnificent displays of the manners either side. Uh, so they're responsible for making tonight happen, and thank you for that. Um, and I've been the link to, to Wayne being here as well, so I do appreciate that for the effort they went to do that. Who's Construction Excellence? We are Construction Excellence, so these rubbishing bunch of people here, which you always talk about. Um, but we are looking for new members. This is the exciting bit. So uh, you are seeing on the front part of this, and around the room there have been space, bits of paper with QR codes on them. You go to the QR code, scan that, go to the website, do the survey monkey thing that we've been boring you about. If you could do that, which helps to set up our agenda for next year. On that, it talks about do you want to be involved in this thing? It's a really good thing. Get involved. It's really good. Uh, we need as much help as we can get. We're having a bit of a change of faces on the on the uh, on the team as well. So if you think you can add something of real value to what we do, you see gaps <coughs> in what we do currently, and think you can fill those, that'd be really good to have you on board. So um, do make sure you take this seriously. Um, I should also welcome Louise. Where is Louise? She's not here. <laughs> She's outside eating sandwiches. Okay. So Louise is our new Teresa. And here's Teresa. Oh, there she is. <laughs> <laughs> What you'll notice is that Louise is not as big as the picture. Um, she's not a human sized person, so that, that's all good. It looks delightfully smiley oh, and all good. So I'm sure she tells me she wasn't drunk during this. But anyway. um, so, welcome to Louise, and thank you, for, thank you for taking the role for us. I'm sure you'll all get to know her as a representative for the club over the next millennia. Um, these are the people that are, the companies that are uh, North Construction Excellent. Lots of diverse people there, which is really great. And it's all, all down to the contribution of everybody that gets into a diverse agenda. Uh, new members of the club, none this month, um, but we've got lots of people who are gearing up to join in the next the next kind of year, sorry, in the next club year when we start in September, so we've got people in the, in the wings waiting to come on and start, start engaging, so that's really good. Looks a terrible slide, doesn't it? No. <laughs> <laughs> so, at that point, this is where I stop waffling, and I'm going to hand over to Mark Kamage, uh, Director of Chapman and Fran, uh, man from York, splendid chap, um, went to university with me, that's how small Norfolk really is, that you end up with wives both in Norfolk and back here again. Uh, but Mark, I'm going to stop offering a hand over to you. Give you a quick bit of that, and I'll switch the ways to play, and I'll just get off. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers. Thank you very much. Good evening. Um, very pleased to be able to introduce tonight's speaker. And I have to admit, when I do uh, introduce guests to these things, it's not often I can just put the name in Wikipedia and find out all about them. So um, it might not all be true, but hopefully most of it uh, is. Um, According to Wikipedia, tonight's speaker spent most of his childhood dressed up as Elvis and Tarzan and walking here. Um, before, as those of us are old enough to remember, burst on the fashion scene with the fashion label Red or Dead. With his wife Geraldine, they won the British Style Council Street Style Award in 1995, 1996 and 1997. And in 1999 set up Hemingway Design, which focuses on people, place, positive social impact and went on to win a series of high profile awards. In the last 30 years, they've helped rebuild Europe's first ever play, pleasure park, they've publicly shamed the housing industry and then demonstrated by master planning and award winning schemes that the better way is possible. <coughs> they've co-designed a new uniform for Transport for London and they've influenced the urban fabric of Bournemouth, Dartford, Kingsley, Maidenhead, Manchester, Whitehaven, as well as community of Blackburn, Bognor Regis and lots more places. And on top of that, they've thrown a 24 hour non-stop multi-arts festival on a beach for 30,000 people, which I think they're doing again this weekend. Without doubt, however, his biggest achievement to date must be the several appearances he's allegedly made on Sky Sports Soccer AM. <laughs> We're delighted to have Henry Ray Design working with us on the, the new £20 million uh, battery green cultural quarter, which was town's fund deal, and we're looking forward to hearing about that and working with them to do that. So ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to tonight's speech, our guest, Wayne Hemingway, MBE. I'll, what time are we? So, I'll speak for about 35-40 minutes and then we'll have just under half an hour to, to chat and have questions.
questions and stuff. Um, so uh, we're, we're a multidisciplinary design agency, which is, uh, you know, reasonably rare in the, in the, the whole team. Um, we collaborate together on doing everything from Dreamland, which is one of our favourite ever. If you, ever if, you ever, if you ever go to Kent and go to the South Coast, Dreamland is one of our favourite um, projects that we've ever done, and, and it's Europe's oldest um, amuse seaside amusement park. And I think that project sums up how, how we work. Um, we, were, we were asked to, we were brought in, we were asked by uh, the Dreamland Trust, who are a community group, in around 2008, if we'd help them save Dreamland from the evil, uh, literally the, the evil um, hands of a of a developer. They were going to. This is Margate Seafront, and, they were, and the land had been sold to Tesco, and had been sold to a housing developer who I won't um, mention, who might be in the room. Um, and they were going to build shit housing like they often do. And, and why would you put a Tesco and shit housing on a historic seafront? You'd have, you know, because once you've done it, you've done it. You know, a, sea, a seafront belongs to fun um, and, and belongs to us all. It doesn't, you know, and the second, the second that you ever put a mass housing development on a seafront, you can't have noise. Uh, you know, you, it, it becomes privatised, and, 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 and there's no way should a promenade ever be privatised. So we, you know, we said yes, we'll back you. And when we do that, we never, we don't ever ask for money. Um, we've never done a spreadsheet or a, a business plan in our lives. We've never lost money. Um, Red or dead was the same. It, it you know, it, it ended up being um, a turnover of, of 20 million, 390 staff. Uh, 23 shops around the world with, with never borrowing a penny, with never employing anybody on their on their CV, just just work, just talking to people and seeing if we could build we build a team, and 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 Dreamland, you know, started with okay, let the, we we gathered, we got 2,000 people to the first meeting, and we worked out how we were going to fight for it, and, and and we just went loud as 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 we do, as you know, as as you, as you know, and we because we knew that. Sometimes the only way to get something done is not about design. Um, yes, we can design, but, but we've also got bloody big mouths and, and we know how to use it and, and we know how to be political with a small p. And, and every, you know, the next, I'll come back to this slide in a second, but we, we've, had this, we've had this slogan, whatever, whatever you want to, mantra. Uh, this, was Red or, this was Red or Dead's mantra. We, we, we never talked about fashion. We, we talked about outcomes and why and why we do things and and that's why you know we've been a B Corp. I don't know if we've got any other B Corps in here. Um, you know how difficult it is to become a B Corp. You know you can't you don't do it by just pretending that you're, you're by greenwashing or anything like that. You have to work re really. You have to prove it over years and years and years. And I think we genuinely have been proving it probably for forty for forty years now. Forty when did we start? For, 42, 42 years ago. Um, and, and, and so yeah, and then, and then we battled for, for Dreamland, we, we got the community behind us, we got the local media, we, we, we worked hard to explain to, the, explain to the elected members that, that really they should not be backing um, this, this sale of, of land to, to greedy people. Uh, and, that, and that it belonged to the community and it belonged, it belonged to the residents, this site, Dreamland, belonged to the residents. And, and then... We, and then we went as far as to go to, to literally knock on the door of Eric Pickles, who was then the communities minister at the government, and persuaded him to do a compulsory purchase. And, it and how often does a Conservative government do a compulsory purchase and, 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 and stop um, a mass house builder and Tesco from doing what they wanted to do? And we achieved it. Uh, and, then, and then from there it becomes very easy once you've done that, you know, you get... You, the money comes in from Historic England and, and all of the and, and the Arts Council and all of that. We're very we're very good at, at, at doing that. Um, we, we we've done big housing schemes. The story behind um, states seven hundred eighty homes in Gateshead, um, which has still got the highest mark from CAVE from Commission and our Commission Built Environment outside of any southeastern housing development in, in the UK in terms of how it was measured. Uh, the story of that I won't go through unless we ask questions about it at the end of this time. Um, we we love doing things like the, the London transport um, the London transport uniform. We 
we co-designed that with, is the 22,000 people wear that uniform. Um, it's, it's amazing to think that London Underground employs, London Underground employs 22,000 people. It's a, you know, you realise then how big a city, how big a city is. And we, we, we did something that was very new at the time. We, we had to, we well, have to bid for jobs. And we said, we, we took a gamble on that one. And we said that we would design the collection live um, on, on webcam so that at any time any of the community could come and look at what we were doing and comment on the designs and play a role in design. 16,000 of them did. And it was a, a bun fight is a very, is a very uh, polite way of, of saying what it was like. But in the end, it was, it was, it's 10 years since that uniform. They've not had to change one item. Uh, and, and, and it will go on and on and on because people like this young lady um, can ma make that uniform as they want it. You know, it, it, it's so, such a non-uniform uniform. And, and, and since then, even though um, we're not a uniform, I know we had red or dead, but it's kind of the, the most left field compared to the rest, everything else we do is from urban design. Yet, in the last, few, in the last two years, we've done the uniform for all the Greenwich, you know, the Royal Museums of Greenwich, and we've just done the the, the, um, the National Portrait Gallery opens next week, I think, after being shut for four years. Absolute, go and see it; it's absolutely a beautiful job they've done inside it. And we've just done the, we've done the new uniform. If I get a chance to talk about it later, I will. But we've done the new uniform, and it's a uniform for the National Portrait Gallery using clothes from charity shops. I mean, that, there's never been anything in the world like that before. And to get, you know, 380 staff wearing a combination of second-hand clothes and waste fabrics that have been made into, into clothes um, is, is groundbreaking. And, and, and that, you know, that we, but we, we'll try not... Everything we do has to be like that, I think, because we're in a lucky situation to be able to do it. Um, we sold really there for a decent amount of money, so it enabled us to make choices and, and not have to do horrible balance sheets and, and all of that kind of stuff. But also it's because, you know, we're, we're difficult sods and we like, to keep, we, keep, we like to keep pushing change. Difficult sods for the right reason, hopefully, most of the time. Um, and, I, and I think, I, you know, where, where, does it, where does it come from? I, and I, I think nurture is really important. And, you know, I'm a, I'm a father of four and a grandfather of five and probably end up with a lot more grandkids the way that they're going. Um, and I think a, a lot of the reason that myself and Geraldine, who are the founders of, of, of this, is we, we were so lucky with our, with our upbringing. So I, you can get the violins out, but my, my father, I mean, I'll never call him my dad, because you, you're not a dad if you leave, it. he left, left me at three, or left my mum at three, so I was brought up by my nan and my pop, and my mum had, you know, spent all the time working. But the whole, the whole way that we were brought up was, was amazing. So. Every item of clothes that my nan, that's my nan on the left, she always made her own clothes. So I was brought up in a household where there was constantly machines whirring. My mum there, uh, again, 100%, 100% making her own clothes. My, my granddad, and they made all my clothes as well. My granddad, every step, we lived in a bungalow in Morecambe, and, um, and, and you know, that's him, in, he, got in, he got in the paper for the first person in Morecambe to ever grow a peach. That was the joy, you know, and like together we made this, this castle, that's me there, and this, the castle there, we made together. Um, that castle, my kids had it, my grandkids, it's their favourite toy now. Um, you know, the, the lead soldiers we made, and my kids, I'll, I'll allow them to have lead soldiers, I'm sure they're not going to die from from that touch wood, um, um, and, and that's, you know, the, the, our, our kids have never had a, a Game Boy, a PlayStation, they've never asked for one, um, they, they, they make things, they do things, and, and that's, that, that's just how, how we've all, always been, um, and I was given a lot of freedom, um, which, you know, I, and there'll be other people in this room from of my generation, you know, I was out clubbing, genuinely clubbing at 13, and I think that was the making of, that was the making of me. I mean, I, I encouraged my kids to have false ID, and they all did it, and I, I, I was certainly out clubbing by 15, and I, I'd like my grandkids out earlier than that, because I, I don't see, I think it's, I think it's terrible that you're, that you're 18 when you can first, when you can go to clubs now, because 
by that stage, you're starting to have responsibilities of going to university and all of that. When certainly by the age by 18, I was I was ready to start a business. I've done and and I, and I was. I'd learned so much about creativity because I'd been out there dancing and, and in bands since the age of 13 and making clothes to go out and all of that. So it's, it's kind of not a joke. I'm deadly serious about it. I'm not, I'm not saying you should be able to drink under 18 or take drugs, but I didn't drink and take, and take drugs. I danced and, and, and I saw bands and, and I was able to do it with complete freedom. And, and, and it was that that, you know, that, that's me at 15 lying about my age and working behind the bar uh, of, a, of a pub, but not drinking. Um, but wanting, but having that desire to have money to go out, which I think is that, that drive. Um, and by the time I was 18 there, uh, you know, that's, that's the first, that's my second band actually, the first band was at 16, so my second band was at 18. And, and by then, the maturity that that gives you and, and the readiness for life of, of being out of, of going to all nighters, you know, Wigan Casino from where near I'm from, where I'm where, near where I was from, it was full of th mainly fourteen and fifteen year olds, but but there were certainly other thirteen year olds. And by the time we got to eighteen, and do you know what? We we weren't we weren't naughty, we were engaged with culture, uh, and that and, and that's you know that's what that's the importance of, I think of getting your your kids to be into culture early on because it doesn't. It just does so much. I it's hard to describe what, what it... I, I know that I couldn't have achieved... And Jerry Dean's the same. We met on the, da on the dance floor as, as teenagers of a Northern Soul Club. Um, she'd left school at 15. You know, she's got her, she got her MBE as well for design. Um, when I, all of this, none of this what I talk about could have happened without Jerry Dean. She doesn't talk. I've got a big mouth. She just gets on with it. She doesn't, she's always done more work than me. Um, and... Um, but she'd left school at 15 with no qualifications whatsoever. Ne never, never went back. To, I went back to get qualifications. She, 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 never, she never bothered. She left school at 15 because she, want, she came from a family who made things and she wanted to have enough money to buy fabric, to make clothes, to go out dancing. Simple, simple as that. And, and, and the, you know, the, the end result of that and the story, which I won't have time to tell tonight, about a teenager making a, a range of clothing, clothing in Kensington Market in, there. Does anybody, have, does anybody know what Kensington Market was? No. Just this amazing place on Kensington High Street, which all place, all cities should have that, where she, for, for £10 a week, <coughs> she was able to take a sewing machine in there. In her second or third week, got spotted by Macy's New York, got an order for 1,600 pieces. Bear in mind, she only made it herself. My mum left a job working... Um, not quite as a wedge as, as in a cocktail bar, but very similar, working behind the bar as well. Um, Jerry's dad became the van driver. We all, with, with the money that we were making on Camden Market, selling second-hand clothes, that, that, you know, having grown up wearing second-hand clothes, it was very easy to have all these stores on Camden as, a, as an 18 and 19-year-old. Um, having all of that wherewithal at the age of 19 to, to have the guts to take an order for 1,600 pieces when you haven't even got a label, when you've never made an order for any shop before, and for your family to, to gather around you and leave their jobs and, and then set up a factory, and, and that's how Red or Dead came about. You know, we didn't even have a name, we didn't have the name Red or Dead back then. Um, but it was that, it was having, number two, it was having two things. One, the impetuosity of youth and that attitude from parents to, to let you get on with it and the encouragement. Uh, but no money was needed because, and that's the other thing about what we try to do as urban designers is to try and do as much as we can to recreate th that opportunity that we had. You know, we are genuinely working class, and, and yet there was no. We didn't need. We didn't need a silver spoon. We didn't need a bank of mum and dad. We didn't need anything because because London gave us that. London gave us Camden at six pounds for a store. Uh, we, Kensington, easy in, easy out, no deposits, no, you didn't, need a, you didn't need a bank reference, you just had to have an idea, and if it failed, it failed, it just didn't, why did it matter? And, and that attitude and that ability, but we, you know, we've allowed pension funds to end that to an extent, we've allowed, <coughs> we've allowed so much to stand in the way of that, and we're doing so much, hopefully, at the moment, to try and break that down, you know, in, in, every, in every way we can, we'll never get it back to how it was, and, and you know, 
we all know how inequality has gone that you know just like gone like that in if you think about it it doesn't it, it is a long time ago so we're, we're looking back at pictures from 1981 <coughs> and 1982 but we still we shouldn't have gone to the point now where it was absolutely within our mindset to, to, to come from Blackburn and Burnley, where I'd moved, my mum had moved to Blackburn when I was seven, to come from Blackburn and Burnley with no money, we came down with 50 quid in our pockets, and to think that we, we knew that we'd buy a house in London at some stage. We'd actually bought it within a year because on the stalls we, took, we, we got to the point where we were taking 10 grand a weekend on Camden Market and we bought a house for cash, um, a big Victorian three bedroom house in northwest London, and we were only 20. Mad, isn't it? Um, but, but we knew we were going to do it, we didn't know we'd do it that quick. But now, you probably, if you came, if you, number one, you, want, you still want to come to London if you were, if you were from Blackburn and Burnley and, 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 you, and you, you had culture and you wanted an exciting life. Nothing's changed at that. But now you're going to, now you're going to live two to a room, um, you're going to pay £2,000 for your rent, um, and you're going to have nothing left, and you're, never, and you're probably never going to own a house in London. And, uh, until you move out of London or you just rent for the rest of your life. And you're probably never going to be able to get a shop um, without creating massive business plans and getting, you know, it's all of, uh, but, it, but that's, you know, that, that's inequality. That's proper inequality. And, and we have to kind of b break that down. And we, we try within every single project that we do. We talk about it at the office. We, like I say, we never talk about what margins are we making. We, we talk about what are we what are we doing that's going to do some kind of social justice, and that literally gets chatted about every day. Um, so I think it's worth I'm just going to just one slide about Red or Dead because um, it, it it's 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 why we are able to do what we do, but it also set us up um, in terms of our, our following and. and it helps. It, it helps that I'm able to get on television. You know that 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 helps. There's no there's no doubt about the fact that media um, coverage gets you places. If you know if you know how to handle the media, you know you can you obviously can mess up, can't you? If you if you if you, if you don't know how to play the game. But we we knew we knew how to. Red or Dead never did one advert. We you know we became obviously a very big brand and designer of the year for three years on on a, on a role like Mark said, but. How, how did we do it if we did it with no adverts, with, with never, no PR agency, with nothing? We did it by our actions, and that's what a brand... So we, we, we haven't talked... We, we, we also do brand... Uh, we've got a brand department turning away design, and we've done the brand for York, for Social Work England, for the National Archive, for towns like Southend and Crewe and places. Um, and and, we, and a, a great example is the, the brand of York, which I mean, you, you probably know a bit about. It's got, there's no logo. We we, never, we 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 didn't. They were a very canny canny um, council that they they employed us to do a brand for them, but with no logo, which we lo which we loved because we don't like doing logos. We like doing brands, and a brand is not a visual identity. There's a, a vi there's a difference between a visual identity and a brand. Um, you know that that forum there is a visual identity. That Chaplin Farron is a visual identity. It's not a brand. A, a brand is what is a brand is what you is what the public understand you as. Um, you know, it, it, it's what it's what is in the soul of, of, your, of your business, and um, and we cr we created a, a brand that didn't need any any logo. It did have a logo right there, but it just wasn't important. People knew exactly what we stood for, and, and all the way through. So from this on the left hand side, that collection there. Bear in mind that collection was nineteen must be nineteen ninety two or, or ninety one was about the movement to, to a vegan diet. You know, that's, it's still, it's still for, to some people, classed as weird today, but we were, we were putting this on the front of whole collections. This, this here, um, we, we, we decided in 1993, we were offered, was it 93 or 94, but anyway, we were offered Kate Moss as a 15 year old, and she was the next generation of this super skinny waifs. And we just said, this is getting ridiculous, you know. Um, we had a discussion within the business and said, let's just go the opposite way. So we went, we decided from then on that we would never use a supermodel 
and we would only ever use real people of all shapes and sizes. And again, that's we're talking about 30 years ago, and we still, we didn't, we still haven't broken the rules because we're still at it as an industry. It's still at it to an extent, and, and that's you know that's that's. But we, but we, but it's who we worked with. You know, this was the this was the coolest underground band at the time. This was this was a band called Ultrasound, and, and that guy was called Tiny. You can see why he's called Tiny. But this is prob this is probably the best best Red or Dead story. So. Um, in about, that's probably 94, something around that time, we wanted to start to move into workwear and denim. And um, we, you know, we, we, so like everything, we researched what the history of, because you have to get it, you have to find out where the history of something is. And we, we found out, how are we to know? We haven't studied fashion. And I think it's probably fairly common knowledge, maybe we should have known, that the history of workwear and denim was in the prisons of America and it was used on chain gangs for, for breaking rocks and, and all of that, and that's, that's why it's a tough fabric. So, but then we found out something really interesting, that the, a lot of, of workwear, not a lot of workwear, some workwear in America was still made in prisons, and there was this massive debate going on between Republicans and Democrats about whether it was right or wrong. Obviously, the Republicans saying that people should be locked up and, um, and, and not allowed to do anything, and Democrats saying, Retrain them, give them something to do, and they're less likely to to reoffend. And we thought, yeah, well, obviously we put together, we would come down on the side of the Democrats. So we thought, could we find could we find um, a manufacturing um, plant in the UK that could make workwear? And 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 we'll and, and we'll we'll enter that argument and see because we knew that our following would would come down on yes, retrain people, give them a chance. And another York connection. We found the only the only factory that could was called Full Sutton <coughs> Prison in York, and um, and anyway, we, we started to put, we started to leak this out a little bit and and and, and talk about it. So that obviously the the, the 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 press who always called us bloody disgrace, sick face of British fashion, you know, the the Daily Mail, the the, the, you know, the Express of, of this world would start to write about it, and that, and that would every time they did, our sales would and our following would go up, up like that. So. Um, but as a result of us leaking it, and, and the, a, a fabric supplier came to us and, and said that um, they'd found, they'd, they'd developed this new fabric made from hemp, and it, would be, and it made perfect workwear, and it looked like denim, and it was just, so they brought it, and it was, wow, and, and it was sustainable, obviously, because it's hemp. And then we thought, how oh, brilliant, this is hemp linked to cannabis, you know, making workwear, linking, you know, kind of, Youth culture and counterculture and James Dean—it was all coming. It was all coming together, and and so we said, yeah, we we'll get this. But the first thing we did is said, but this is definitely there's no there's no cannabis in it, is it? It's, it's, a, it's they said no, this is a byproduct. You know, you can't smoke it. And they laughed about it because we, we said it's being made in a prison and all that kind. Of, we knew that. So anyway, starts being made. I came home from I came home from picking the kids up from school, uh, and outside the house was. You know when you see like outside Boris Johnson's house and you see this bank of fucking, and they were, they were there. They were just, I've never seen some. We, we got, we'd done some things and we got press, but nothing quite like this. And it was like, what are you doing? What are you doing? Smuggling uh, cannabis on a roll into Paul Sutton? <laughs> Next thing, get shouted out. Peter Sutcliffe is 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 in is in there. You know, do you not care about these things? And you, your heart just sinks. You think, is this the end? You know, is this the end of your career? Because you think, have you really, really mucked up? So the first thing you do is you get on the phone to, to the, um, to the fabric supplier, and they just burst out laughing, saying it's a hundred percent. There's not a chance. We, you know, the, the science, and, and, and they, they said, and they said, we, 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 you know, we should ring the Guardian here because they're gonna, get, they're gonna love, absolutely love this. And so they did. We rang the Guardian, who, you know, we showed them all the science, and, and they just wrote a piece against the Daily Mail, as they would love to do, and, and, and we just got so much publicity, and, our set, and it was just crazy, our following just went up and up and up. Other things that we did was, we, we, this collection here, we, the French, would, we, we've always designed and worked closely with uh, Greenpeace, and um, this, this collection was, the, the, the French were doing uh, nuclear testing in, in an atoll, was it called Bikini Atoll or something in the South Pacific? <coughs> and, and Greenpeace were wrapping the French embassy in NON, non and, and, and they, they, they famously wrapped um, um, Nelson's column in it and all, and all of that kind of stuff. And we, we, we decided that we'd, we'd back Greenpeace on this one and we put 
their logo and um, not on the back of the on the backdrop of the catwalk, knowing that we were designers of the year and that we'd have to be on news at ten, which we were. But we did more than that. We banned all French buyers from the show, and we said we're not going to sell to France. It was twenty three percent of our of our turnover back then, because French is the big France is the biggest consumer of, of designer fashion, and we took that risk and, and it paid off. We got the biggest sales that year because other countries piled in, and and, it, and again we, because we we made. That decision, people wrote about it, and, and so that that's you know that's how we've that's how we've operated. Um, <coughs> we, but lots of the things that we do, um, we think we're making change, and and, and we do, and it fails. Um, so, but we but we but we don't give up, and, and a bit more about that in a second, I suppose, is that in in, in the early two thousands, we we thought we'd made a massive breakthrough. I've always been patron of this. Um, charity called Trade, who are textile recycling, they've got 13 shops in London, just like a cool, a cool charity basically. And, um, and we managed to get um, second-hand clothes into Topshop and Topman. Uh, this is 20, 21 years ago. A big chunk of Oxford Circus, of Birmingham Bull Ring, of Arndale in Manchester. Um, and it was like, wow. We fast fashion because we—I don't think it was called fast fashion then—but we knew that fashion had to change and it had to have more than just new clothes all the time. We got it in there, uh, and and it and it sold it, it sold really really well and it was really successful. And then Philip Green came along, uh, and we, you know we fell out and uh, he kicked all the second hand out. Said, "What's all this rubbish in?" You know, and, and all of that. And so you don't always win. You know, you we. we, we but 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 the, but you have but you have to keep you have to keep going at it. Um, so I'm going to skip past that one. Um, so urban de back onto urban design. Th this is a very good example of what we consider uh, of why we're half decent urban designers. So in Blackburn in 2009 or 2010, th this this street here, which um, is called Town Hall Street. Every single shop um, was empty, and the council were able to buy and bought them all for crazy money, 15, 20 grand. You know, it's not it's not Norwich, it's Blackburn, so it's not as cheap nowadays. But, but it, you know, they could afford to buy this these properties, and they were all boarded up. And they asked if we would do our graphic team would do a vinyl wrap on each shop to tell the history of that part of that part of of, uh, of, of Blackburn town centre, and we just said, well. Because we hate those ideas of wrapping shops, we just can't bear it. We, we, we said, why would you, why would you, if, if if these shops are empty, why do you want to wrap them to say to tell a story about the past, which which towns are doing everywhere? You know, why can't you, every town should look forward? You know, you, you can you, you should, you know, engage with the past. Obviously, heritage is really important. To, you, you look back to look forward and all of that. But 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 why do you want? You've got all of these shops. You want us to tell the story of the manufacturing of Blackburn, but why don't you put the manufacturing in those windows? Why don't you have all of those shops? And we came up with this idea of um, performance making. So Blackburn is a town that's got the highest proportion of people who get up and go to work and make things. So 19.8% of the population are in manufacturing. The national average is 10%, and cities like... I don't know what Norwich is, but I know that London's 7%, Manchester's 7.5%, so I imagine Norwich is probably, most of the cities are around 7, 7 to 8%. Seven to 8%. Um, but Blackburn can rightly claim to be the highest, Skelmersdale is the second, and rightly claim to have the highest proportion of people. So we said, look, just concentrate on what we are as a town, and let's, let's get young makers, whatever they're making, into those shop windows, give them the shops for completely free, we'll call it performance making, uh, and and will and and they can have the shops for free Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and they sell the stuff behind. But they've got to make in the windows. So we found jewellers, bike makers making from old scraps, chocolate makers, t-shirt printers, and filled twelve shops. I think it was, and it became a tourist attraction within a month. Um, you know, people were bringing kids who wanted to come down. People just stood outside just watching. As long as it wasn't raining, they were watching, and and. It became really, really we, had to, we had to come up with a brand after that, so we called it Blackburn is Open and we branded all the shops and, and it, got, it got in the media. Next thing obviously it becomes reason, once you start to get the publicity, funding pours in, we got 
300 odd thousand from the Arts Council to buy the bank on the corner and open the first making rooms outside of a major city. Blackburn is, you know, Blackburn is, if anybody knows it, is a small ish Lancashire town, a depressed Lancashire town. You know, it's not got, not got anything like the spark of Norwich or, you know, anything, you know, this is so desirable compared, compared to Blackburn. I can't tell you the, dif the difference. Um, and but yet we got the money, we opened the making rooms, which was three stories of, you know, one floor of textile making, so you could, you know, nobody nowadays has an overlocker at home, or few people do, so you could make the skirt, come and get it over, overlocked there. Um, you, a met, kind of a men's shed where fix you fix up a doll's house with a, a router and all of that kind of stuff, and then also 3D printers and all of that. Lot. And then on the back of that, uh, co-working opened around it. And then, and then we said, right, Let's claim, let's claim this town as, we said, we came with, let's call it, let's start a festival and do the National Festival of Making. We've got, it can't be anywhere else, we're doing all of this, it's got the, we've got the empirical proof that it is the, t the national town of making, let's do the National Festival of Making. And it's been going now for eight years, and this year, um, what, you know, in, in the last, um, the last um, set of MPOs, National Portfolio Organisation. You know, you know when the government famously took the money away from the English National Opera and <coughs> wanted to distribute it around the country. Well, this is this is one of the, this was the one of the big beneficiaries of it. So it's now an MPO uh, and is set up for you know it's been going this this July to be its eighth year and it'll obviously go on for for many many years many many years now. But on top, but Blackburn is is thriving now and and you you can you can feel the making in the town centre. You can feel it everywhere. And, and that, that matters. It, it's given a town a sense of purpose, but more than that as well, is it what, and this, this we didn't know at the time, but the, but the growth in manufacturing has come from the Asian community. And, and Blackburn has been split for a long, long time. It, it, was, it was split by a urban design between the Asian community. It wasn't helped by urban design by putting a four lane road, Barbara Castle Way, between um, between the the, Asian, the traditional Asian area and and the the, the, the white area, uh, which completely split the town, and and, uh, and and as you know and as you've read in towns like Rochdale and Bury and Blackburn, there's been all sorts of issues between the, you know it's not like down here, um, it, 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 it really isn't, um, but this making has really brought it together because it's it's been the Asian community who are driving the renaissance uh, in making and and it's just it just feels great you just all of a sudden it feels like a coming together and so i think it, and these things sometimes happen by a chance and a side effect but but if you do these kind of things you get this you get these positive things happening um the lot of stuff um which obviously is, is close to here so this this weekend um as you can see i'm dressed like a deck chair um, because I'm, then I don't have to find one, I can just lie on myself. Um, it, is, it is the uh, First Light. Um, and the story of First Light, is, is that most people know about First Light? Yeah. It's, it's a brilliant festival. It's, it's just, well, I don't, uh, every one of my friends is in Lowestoft this weekend, every one of the family, the grandkids, it's their favourite festival. Everybody we know decamp, decamps here, it's just bloody phenomenally isn't it Hannah it's just unbelievable it's just unbelievable uh, it's the most joyous thing that you could imagine and why why is it joyous so and and when we set out on this this road in lower stuff we 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 had never been to lower stuff in our lives um, we uh, we it was myself and my wife and, I, and I'm not sure how we had we bid we bid for a job and it was tiny tiny fees it might have been Tilly asked one of our my eldest daughter and the partner asked me how much it was recently. I, I can't remember. I think 2016, I think it was 20 odd grand. And we thought, let's go. We like the seaside. Let's go and have a look. And we got there. We, just, we were just bowled over by this place that we, we, we'd never heard of and people were disparaging about that had just these amazing white sandy beaches, not that dissimilar to Bournemouth in terms of their scale, um, up to Pakefield and the, and the sand dunes. And then I went running along the beach and just couldn't like, It was just amazing. And then the architecture, obviously, the town centre is. The town centre and one of the worst I've ever seen, but you know, <laughs> but as a, but the opportunity 
was, was just was just phenomenal. Anyway, so we did we did the, we did a vision for the South Beach, so from uh, East Point Pavilion, um, you know, from the harbour basically right up to Paintfield, uh, and a mass, and a loose a loose master plan for that, and um, and and with a set of interventions of which you did you did the beach huts, um, and. And, but one of them we said, let, you know, what we need to do is, whatever architecture is done there, the, 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 what, what, that, what, what it's got is this amazing prom, two-level promenade with all of the, the, the great linear parks and, and pocket parks along it, and a fucking amazing beach. I mean, like, white sand and wide and, 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 and safe, relatively safe swimming and sand dunes and, and lovely old, you know, just, it was just, how that, and every time we went, whenever we went, there was nobody on the beach and nobody, you know, what, what, what was, and it's got a train line and it's close to Norwich, you know, and, and it hasn't got the, the Kiss Me Quick Blackpool Yarmouth, which is very hard to solve, you know, I think the hardest two coastal towns in the UK to solve are probably Blackpool and Yarmouth because of because of how taste has changed and, and, and the scale of what of what it was of, of what the Kiss Me Quick culture was and, and the scale of how it shifted the other the other way. So but Lowestoft didn't have the Kiss Me Quick culture. It hadn't it, it hadn't it was completely unspoiled. So anyway, we got what we always do, we got creatives into a room and we kept trying to say, what can we do here? that will make noise, that's not going to cost an arm and a leg, and, and we can do fast, and, and get the, and what can we, and, and that will be a trigger for other things. In other words, you know, could we do another festival, of, a ver something else that was like a festival of making, or, or other stuff that we do. And we, could, we didn't get anywhere for ages. And then this one woman said, we were sat on one of the, the tatty hotels on the front, uh, and she said, on Midsummer's day, I go out with my dog onto that bit of sand over there, and um, and I feel like I'm getting, I feel really mystical. I feel like I'm getting the, the first. I go up to ten to around about ten to four in the morning, and I'm thinking, what? Where's this going? So I feel like I'm getting first light hitting Britain uh, on Midsummer's day, and that feels special to me. And I never miss it, and I thought, what an amazing thing to say. And I said, well. What, why are you saying that? She said, well, Lowestoft is Britain's most easterly town. And that bit, that's, there, there is a more easterly point in, in Lowestoft, but that's the most easterly bit of sand where I can take my dog. And I said, and that gets first light. I said, so that's Britain's most easterly beach, is it? I said, yeah. And I, I know that, I, I bet even people in this room, when you live so close to it, you might know now because of what first light's done these last few years, but I bet a lot of you didn't know five years ago. Four, four or five years ago, that you had that you had the equivalent of John O'Groats, Land's End, and the Lizard. So the fourth point, mm -hmm. the fourth point to those three famous places here on your doorstep. Is that true? Is that fair to say? How the hell did as a nation didn't 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 we know that? So we immediately we said, okay, you are the festival. We're calling this first light, and the festival takes place through the night so that we celebrate it at its peak at 10 to 4 in the morning and people stay on the beach all night and if we can achieve that it will get notoriety we almost got really got notoriety last year with some very naughty people at that <laughs> earlier on in the evening but we've changed we've solved that one um, thank god nobody died <laughs> um, um, but um <laughs> and um and uh, and so it happened and the council were brilliant they allowed you know this weekend, it, well, it's, it's, you can't camp on the beach anymore. It's completely sold out. Obviously, everybody wants to camp on the beach. But people will stay on the beach all night. They'll camp on the beach. They'll drive camper vans up to a beach edge. Um, as I say, you can't camp on, I'm pretty sure it's sold out. The camp, you can still come down all day Saturday and all day Sunday and you can stay. You can sleep in sleeping bags up, up, up on the beach all night. You just can't go in the, you can't bring a tent anymore because that, that bit's full. But it's just this most amazing festival. And this weekend, there'll be... 55,000 people there, maybe more. Um, you know, we, have, we do have a problem with numbers, the, the scale, but it's massive. It stretches, it stretches um, all the way along from, um, all the way along the prom, and the prom is enormous if you, if you know, if you know a lot of stuff. On the back of that, then we, we, we brought 
again, the money starts piling in. I think Lowestoft's had 300 odd million, I think, since first light. It's something mad, you know. I think it's had, I think it's 380 million that it's had in funding, central government funding. And First Light has become an NPO in the same round that got rid of the ENL. Um, I'm, I'm quite pleased, really, um, that, that they've started to take the money out of London and put it in, and put it into places like like Lower Stuffed. Um, we got the funding to do uh, the East Point Pavilion um, with. Well, Hannah's just gone, but stand up. <laughs> Anthony. Um, so we, we 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 got we we did we did this and um, TV problems, yes. Not architecture, not 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 from your fault, um, um, but um, but it's great and it's a massive asset and it'll be and it'll be with us. For, and it, they were going to pull this down. They were, they, they, they'd been empty for it had been empty for years and years and years, and they couldn't find um, a, an operator for it. It's obviously full Victorian, so it had not it has no heritage value. Um, but what a space! And look and the location, right, right on the you know not the sandiest bit of the beach, but but right on the beach. And the first thing that you come to when you come out the train station and you, and you head onto the beach, and it's and it's now the place where where lower stuff shines the first light on new talent, whether it's bands, poets, comedians, new food traders, new bar operators with a rotating. It it, it does what it does what lower stuff. Is always going to do now, and that's shine a shine a first light, and you'll see the whole of this festival is about shining a, a first light on, on new talent. And then working with Chaplin Farron, we're now um, we've got one project with Chaplin Farron and one one not with. So this um, this is Battery Green, um, which is so the the, the high street um, runs up there, and and if you know lower stuff to high street, it. It is as bad as it is as bad as it gets um, in terms of high streets, but it's not their fault. It, you know, it's a town that's lost, that's not had it, any kind of. It lost its industry and it's not had it replaced. It's not the town's fault, but it is the high street. It's bad, and this is a chance. Not to, it connects to the high street, but it's a chance to give the high street a, 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 shot, a, a major shot in the arm. It's creating a new cultural quarter. It's fraught with difficulties and fraught with toing and froing and fraught with argument but we'll get but we'll get there um, because it's it, it's so vital to the to the future of that of, of the heart of the town i mean a town that's got its town center completely disconnected from the prom is a problem the prom is beautiful and will and we'll obviously is on a is on a is on a route and we're you know we're now doing all the lands we, we've got a landscape project working with a landscape team to do that to re to bring the to redo the uh, the fountains and and all of this area around East Point Pavilion, and that's easier to do because it's got a beach next to it. We know that people are going to come to it, and we can, you know, we can bring money in because food traders want to be in that location and all that. This is this is like being, this is this is ur urban pioneering at its extreme. It's extreme urban design because to attract people there is, re is really, really difficult. So we we've got the shortest tour, haven't we? I mean, it is, it's, it's a tough, it's a tough it. Um, but we'll get, we'll get there. Um, I'm not gonna show the films. In, we've been working in King's Cross, because I haven't got time, we've been working in King's Cross for, since almost the whole lot of, of, of King's Cross. If you haven't, has there, who has never been to King's Cross since it's been done, just out of interest? Have you all been to King's Cross? What would you think about it? <coughs> To me, it's the best regeneration in Britain, um, the best in my lifetime. Um, it's as good as Northern Europe as anywhere in Northern Europe. Maybe uh, Copenhagen does things way better than us. Um, and, and and just I want to say some of the just some of the thinking behind it. You know, some of the thinking that we've been involved in. So has anybody been to Cold Drops Yard? Um, Cold Drops Yard is a very, very brave thing, creating a shopping centre uh, at a time when people are knocking down shopping centres. But, but, King, but King's Cross can't just be stations, Google offices, two million pound flats, brilliant public space. Um, I, I, I'd like to have shown you this video, but I, ha I haven't got time, but I, I can, it, it's probably on our website. If you look at, it, it explains a lot about the fun of King's Cross, uh, King of King's Cross that I've talked too much. Um, but this is, this is really important. They created a shopping centre, and in that shopping centre are Cos, Paul Smith, 
uh, Universal Works, a brilliant um, Abel and Carl, not Abel and Carl, um, oh, oh, there's loads of really good brand, brands in there. They're kind of brands that are a combination of sustainable, um, the right side of the right side of mass market. We, we we were working with them on the curation of all of that and 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 of all of the placemaking. So we do most of the placemaking there. And um, we said, right, the anchor tenant should be shelter, should be a charity shop. This, bear in mind that you never see a charity shop in it. It's like seeing it. It's like Westfield opening and, and saying that, or you know, it's like Westfield opening and saying putting shelter at the centre of it rather than um, Armani or something like that. And, but more than that, we built the shop completely out of the waste materials that Thomas Heatherwick was using to do the Samsung store, which goes over, which goes over, you've seen the, tab, the Samsung store that goes over the top of it. And just think of those two statements, what, what they meant, <coughs> and, what, what, um, and, the, and, the, and the story that that gives out. Shelter, so six, six years later, shelter is there. It's, it takes around about seven thousand, it's on a turnover end, so we get to see the turn, it takes about seven grand a day. Um, it get, all the, all, everybody there can donate their stuff, so Google love it, because they, all the Google employees donate their, their, their clothes, all these American clothes get, get, end up in there, all the residents. It's just a win-win for everybody, and, 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 it's, do, and it's doing right. Um, this is, we, the, the next thing it, we're very proud of, we started uh, this thing called Charity Supermarket there, so we brought, on the back of that, we brought all of these charities together. So, how many charities over there? 20 charities, each, each is in a separate one of these. Uh, from national charities to local charities, but with changing rooms, um, and 20,000 people turned up. And, and obviously it was, and, and, and what it did, it, it increased the sales of Paul Smith, cars, um, so this is, Charity shops increasing. So the more charity we put in there, the more the sales were going up, and the more the restaurants were taking. So this was a this this completely changed. This was like game changing, and and on the back of that, <coughs> oops, we I'm not going to talk about that. Uh, we started to think about greenwashing and and how <coughs> and, and we knew the importance of charity shops. So we created charity supermarket. Has anybody heard of charity? So it's been getting loads of publicity. We we. We kicked off in Brent Cross. Um, we took three hundred and seventy thousand pounds in the first six weeks of the. Well, it was a six week, um, six week pop up. Sold forty thousand pounds of. Sold forty thousand items. Went to Reading. Did seventy percent of that. We opened in Glasgow in two weeks yesterday, which is very scary. We've not been that far away before. Then we opened in Bristol. Um, we're, we're negotiating on a massive permanent store on Oxford, semi-permanent store on Oxford Street with the Crown Estate. It's basically Top Shop from 90. We're getting our own back now. It's basically Top Shop from. This is a full circle thing that I told about. This is Top Shop from 1995, but that, and they're in old. They're only in old Top Shops, by the way. So 20,000 square foot Top Shops and Top Mans, 100% second-hand clothes. They are taking more than Top Shop took. Top shop left their left their sales, but we're going into these shops. They're just all the rails are in there. We're allowed to take the rails. We use Top Shop bags. We use their tilts. It's fucking amazing. <laughs> <laughs> but, we'll an old connect to Top Shop. Send us the details. Top land, Depends who the landlord is. It's going to be a Tesco's apparently. Is it? So. Right. <laughs> Let's fight it. We're up for that. One. We're up for that. One. Um, so um, I will just. And this is what people say about it. Oh, I haven't got time. It's not, it's not clicking. Never mind, we're going to keep going. Um, but it's just good. To, uh, yeah, so this is... Um, but with everything that we do, we prove it as well. Um, you know, we, we, we make sure that we document everything. Yeah? How many days cancer research of nurses, you know, how, how many advice calls were shelter able to take from this? How many hours of specialist nursing cares? Everything we do... We have to document that as a as a B Corp. We, we know we have to we know we have to do that. And it's but the power of those figures. That that opens door after door after door for us. It wins us bids. It wins us bids on things that are nothing to do with charity supermarket. Because they know that we mean business. Absolutely <coughs> we, we mean business. And we don't take a penny out of these projects, by the way. 
we, we, we put money in to do this. It's actually building up a nice war chest of money at charity supermarket. We've got a nice, healthy bank account, but we don't take anything out. It'll go to something really interesting that we'll do. We'll use it as a war chest to do something really interesting. We invented the weekend is the last thing I'll talk about. Then we'll have a quick twitch chat. This is, again, we're doing, we're doing the place making at Media City. We've just done, we did a place brand for Media City. It was 10 years of Media City, which is where the BBC are up, up in Manchester. It's bloody boring as a place. And um, so we did a, a place brand and a set of values. And then, we, then we, we, we've done a, a, a very loose master plan for it. And, and now we're doing, we're, we're now we're doing um, place making. And what last, last, not last weekend, the weekend before, after a, a false start, because the Queen died previously, but that's another story, um, we did We Invented the Weekend. Imagine a place that can own the weekend. Media City owned the weekend that they didn't know about it. We dug out of history the fact that in 1843, Robert Lowe's, <coughs> a local South, Southordian, fought for workers' rights to get textile workers up to get the, the factories the first time they ever had a day off at weekend um, and, and, and we, we checked all this out we found it and we checked all this out and it was absolutely true and, it, and like, just like first light in lower stuff we got we got people to check it all and we got Salford University to check and yes five years before Henry Ford gave weekends off in America Salford gave its workers so we, and it sounded so great to Manchester, we invented the weekend. It's like Manchester says on the, God, on the eighth day, God invented Manchester. Um, and um, and this, this felt so much like that. And we did a festival that was all about the weekend. And, and just think of what that means. It means we, could, we got the RHS to be part of it, BBC sponsoring it, a Booper putting tens of thousands of pounds into it, because the weekends are where everybody spends their money. So we've actually created something now that's so sponsorable and it's a free festival. We had 100,000 people at the first one. It's the biggest launch we've ever done. A hundred, and it was on the weekend that Man United played Man City in London, and there was a two-day rail strike. And we still got 100,000 people to it. And, and obviously, that's, that, this is around forever now. It, and, and Salford owns the weekend. Right, that's it. Um, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> The next few bits and pieces for us. Uh, so our summer party, so this is the end of the lecture season for the year. We've got a summer bash coming up though, uh, on the 13th of July at the Georgian Townhouse, on Monday Road. It's really good, come along. Um, it's purely about networking. See these excited, glamorous people enjoying the networking here. Uh, that's what it's all about, so getting to know people and getting to know people in your industry and, and networking generally. Um, tickets are available, there's only 100 spaces, so you've got to be quick on picking those up. It's really important to do that. Um, it's a fine art thing, but we look forward to seeing that. It's a really good thing. Um, what else have we got? Uh, this, okay, so uh, North Constructing Excellence Awards Awards. What do you think? So we sent out, uh, with help of Rob and John, who helped put the, put the stuff together, uh, a survey monkey form that came to most people's emails. Most people go, oh yeah, that's great. I'll, I'll follow up with the one that I get from every, every time somebody drops something to my house or DVD or how well they do on Tripadvisor. Please do it. It really helps us out. If you want some of the questions on there are really important for us, I mean, what kind of events do you want? What do you want to hear about? What do you want to try and find the speakers to talk about? Unless you fill in those things, we'll just keep doing our own thing. We want missing the mark, we don't want to miss the mark. We want to give you events that you really enjoy coming to and be well attended. Um, so please make the effort to do that. You'll see around the space upstairs here, here's this, you can do that phone thing, you can link to that. It's all good, you've got the new email already, but here it is, just while I'm waffling away, you can follow that if you like. Too slow going on. Um, uh, but really thank you for that, thank you too. So thank you to Chapman Front and their sponsorship this evening. Thank you all for your introduction of Wayne. Um, thank you to Wikipedia. Um, <laughs> and I hope that you enjoy this evening and well. Uh, obviously we usually go on to the Coach and Horses now, if anyone wants to be there, we'd like to see you there. You have an outside area as well, which not many people will know. There's a great big courtyard behind the space. I didn't know until recently. It's called Fresh Air, I understand, so that'd be good. Um, so thank you very much for your time and attention this evening. And, uh, Good night, that's all. And there's the logo again. Yeah.